Hi lovelies and welcome to The Witch's Cookery. Today I would like to give you some ideas and inspirations on how to set up an altar for your witchcraft practice. We will also go over different altar setups, learning the whys, what's and how's about having or not having an altar in the first place. Throughout the video I will also give you a glimpse into my own personal altar setups. And of course before sitting down to film this I scoured the internet, I looked through YouTube, checked out other videos on a topic and something that really stood out to me is that most of the videos only discuss one type of altar, the Wiccan altar or the ceremonial elemental inspired type of altar setup. And I do have to say some of them sounded just a tad bossy and a bit uh, if you're not doing it this way you're doing it wrong. And on this channel we're not about that. We live and let live. But there are so many more options out there that might fit you and your witchcraft way better and in this video we will learn all about them. But let's get magical. What is an altar for witchcraft? First and foremost it's a sacred space to work your magic on, with or around. How that space looks is completely personal and dependent on your preference and abilities. But it should be a space or location where you feel calm, grounded, relaxed and able to open up, be yourself, explore, reflect, get in touch with your inner self, the world around you and work your magic. Some people practicing witchcraft do have an altar but a lot of witches also choose to not have an altar space at all. It's definitely not a necessity but it's a nice thing to have if you feel a connection to that certain practice. Some people keep their altar private, out of sight, they won't share it with others, they won't show it to others, other people have it on display in the middle of their home, some people only use it themselves, other people share it maybe with their partner or their kids or their entire family. How is an altar used in witchcraft? Again there are different ways. A lot of people use the altar space to actually perform spells and rituals on, a space to meditate at, to pray at, to practice grounding or other ceremonies. For other people again it might just be the place that holds all their witchcraft supplies and knickknacks and tidbits, schnickschnacks and finma thingies. Other witches again use it more as a focal point for energy, as a decorative display that just makes them happy, that brings that magical energy into the home. But it can also be used as a place of worship and remembrance, especially when working with deities or working ancestral magic. But to sum it all up in one little magical package, it's a sacred space that helps you shift your mindset from the mundane to the magical. Now there are a thousand and seven types of witches out there. As different as people are, as different altar spaces can look like. So there are also different types of altars. The version that you see mostly floating around YouTube is the Wiccan altar with a Wiccan altar setup that usually includes the elements as well as the ritual tools and we'll speak about that in just a bit. And altar forms that are derived from that are those mostly used in ceremonial or elemental magic. There are also religious altars that are dedicated to some deity of a specific pagan pantheon or of the current religions. On the other hand you have purely secular altars that don't involve any worshipping of godlike figures. Especially when we're speaking about religious type of altars that are dedicated to one deity, we might more speak of a shrine. As well as if you're working with ancestral magic, altar dedicated to your ancestors that might also more be titled a shrine but it's just semantics. Call it whatever you feel like. Culturally influenced altars are also a very interesting subcategory and it will widely fluctuate from culture to culture, country to country. Here for example we have the Herrgottswinkel but something that might be a bit more well known in the English speaking witch world might be an ofrenda for example. You can also have an altar for your specific niche or knack of the craft. A kitchen witch might have a kitchen altar, a cottage witch might make her entire house her altar, a green witch might have an altar set up dedicated to plant spirits, to plants, to growing plants or maybe even outside. If you consider yourself a crystal witch working a lot with that energy you might have an altar just for your crystal collection. I personally also have a self-care altar that I will show you in just a bit. There are seasonal altars when you work a lot with the wheel of the year that you might want to redecorate for every pagan holiday. Now if you're wondering how how to start an altar, you might also be wondering where to place your altar. Again, completely up to you. It can be inside, 
outside in a shoebox, on a desk, on a shelf, on a table, in the back of your closet. Shout out to all my broom closeted veggies. In a locker, in a hollow tree, in your garden, or even inside your own mind. In case you're wondering, but how would that work? You can visualize a sacred space in your head before you perform any type of spell or ritual, especially if you don't have the option to set up a physical altar where you are. A lot of people seem to like to set their altar up in the cardinal directions. In Wiccan belief, depending on the subform that you're following, the most common directions are to face your altar east or north. Wait, let me figure that out. Nie ohne Seife waschen. East and north. Anyway, moving on. Staying with the idea of the cardinal directions, you can also think about what each direction symbolizes to you or which kind of energy it calls in. Let the altar face that directions, maybe to work with your emotion or more with your heart or more with your head or more with spirit. Especially if you wanna work on your altar and wanna have it a functional space, it might make a little bit more sense to have it in that area that you're working with. I, for example, do have a kitchen altar as well as a little setup in my garden because these are two spots where I usually work my magic. It can be a workable surface, it can be a purely decorative surface, or maybe you just need a surface that's out of reach of any furry demons and little crotch goblins. Thank you to whoever mentioned it word to me. It's Fitting. If you don't want to have a permanent altar set up but just want to get it out when you're doing your rituals, your spells and so on, put it maybe in a shoebox or roll it up in a little cloth or in a scarf. This is also a great way to take it with you when you're going somewhere else, when you're traveling or of course when you're Harry Pottering it in the broom closet. One statement that I always see floating by in all those Facebook witchcraft groups is you should never put your altar in your bedroom. Uh. Oh, I do have a little sex magic altar in my bedroom and it's uh, great. <laughs> and as with almost everything in the witchcraft community, they try to make it a rule. It's not a rule, it's a personal preference. If someone tries to tell you what to do and what not to do, You do what works for you. So now that we know where to set up an altar and what kinds of altars are out there, even though this was an incomplete list, now we want to know what to put on an altar for witchcraft practice. Deity work is part of your witchcraft practice. You might want to have a statue, some type of representation of your god or goddess there. If you're working with the female and the male god or the feminine and masculine aspect, you can also have representations of those two elements there. In a ceremonial or Wiccan context, you also have ceremonial tools that are traditionally placed on the altar. The cup symbolizing water, the wand symbolizing air, the athemi or ritual knife symbolizing fire, and a pentacle symbolizing earth. I hope I got it right. I need to fact check, I'm sorry. What I really don't like is um, people that spread misinformation. <laughs> ritual tools, the car. My god, how much can one write for a single thing? I was correct, except for instead of cup, they use the word chalice. You can have your tools there, either all your tools or just the tools you're working with at the moment. Wand, tarot decks, oracle decks, rune stones, divination tools, grind tools, candles, herbs, incense, Florida water, sage, your cauldron, crystals, your book of shadows, journals, pens, sacred objects that hold meaning to you, a letter that someone wrote to you, heirlooms, enchanted jewelry, mirrors, seasonal decor, flowers, symbols for the pagan holidays, candle holders, instant burners, bones, keepsakes, pictures, especially when working with ancestral magic. Don't worry if you're just starting out in witchcraft and now you're like, I don't have the money to buy all that crap. Don't worry, you don't need it. I never bought any of that either. And yet a witch <laughs> can replace everything with item you either already have or you can find outside or you can make very easily yourself. It's also a place to leave your offerings, however that might look. I also have my current spells there, papers that I've written on or spell candles that I made, altar cloth on it to keep the area nice and clean. Personally, I'm too clumsy and it would just get stained and burned and 
messed up with wax. So we're not doing this here. We're working on an easy to clean surface. You might also consider including statues, art, depictions, pictures that you've drawn yourself, knickknacks that you found outside or in a store, literally anything that you feel a magical connection to and it is special to you and that you feel brings something to that magical sacred space and just makes it better. Decoration can also be based on what you're naturally drawn to in your witchcraft. Things found in the forest for my forest witches, cooking spoons, kitchen witch, seashells for sea witches out there. And it doesn't have to look witchy. It doesn't have to look like everyone's space. Altars are highly personal. The aesthetic can range for functional and basic over personality and aesthetic influence to designed after your star sign or your hobbies and interests. If you're wondering how a seasonal altar might look like and what you could incorporate for one of the pagan holidays, I will actually film a walkthrough for my Mabin altar setup and I will post it over on Patreon for tiers two and three in a couple of days. Now, how do I work with my altar? I actually have multiple spaces around my house. What I seldomly do is to work directly on the altar space. I do it now more because I'm filming it, so it's easier and more aesthetic. But usually it's only a certain station that holds tools or decoration for a certain type of vibe and energy that I want to place in my house. I have a self-care altar in the bathroom. In the mornings I will do affirmations or glamour spells there and in the evening I use it for cleansing rituals. Occasionally if I'm somewhere else I will set up a travel altar. You might have seen the one in my sewage video vlog that I did for my full moon ritual. Then I have a kitchen and hearth altar that is installed in the middle of my apartment. On the wall, on the former chimney, the fireplace, on shelves. Sorry, it's better to you. Huh? <laughs> dirty, I can't touch it now because that will make it even dirtier. That is my space to place most things family related. It will usually have a couple of different candle colors that we will light during breakfast to evoke a certain energy for the day. It also has pictures of family members. It has my witchy calendar, my family calendar, my lovely wooden spoon pentagram, things that we have gathered on walks together or little craft projects from my son. This is also the space where I dry most of my herb bundles. The biggest space is my seasonal altar that's just next to the entrance that I will switch up every one and a half month or so and I place seasonal objects on it. This is also the place that holds most of my spells. It has a living potted plant that I use for growing and seedling spells. Items associated with the holidays, with the season, with the current weather, with my current mood. Over it there are also wind chimes and I use that for energy cleansing because I like that positive energy to immediately greet me at the door and I can sound cleanse all the negativity off if I'm coming in with a lot of baggage or anger or sadness or frustration so that my house stays this calm happy haven. It holds my book of shadow from last year and as I'm heavily into Bavarian folk witchcraft it also has elements of the Herrgottswinkel which is a place in old Bavarian farmhouses that holds all kinds of religious objects in the main sitting room in a little corner on a little altar. The figure of Mary but it's usually Mary of the Wells Mary of the forest, Mary of the herbs. So you can see the pagan influences that are still holding on to that. And another very popular figure for the Herrgottswinkel is Saint Hubertus, patron saint of the hunters, that actually in the symbolism connects back to the Celtic god Serenus. Little shout out to my subscriber in Berlin. You know who you are. I thought you might find it interesting. That's why I either include blessed herbs from some Catholic religious event or the Patrona Bavaria candle, patroness of Bavaria, or other Catholic religious items that I connect to, even though I do practice secular and not religious. I hope this video on how 
how to set up an altar for witchcraft inspired you or helped you, let me know how you have set up your altar. Maybe you can give some of the other witches ideas or tips and tricks. Or if you're in a broom closet, how do you do that? I'm going to see you very soon. My favorite holiday, Mabin, is coming up. And this month we're going strong. There are so many videos here that I'm super excited for. So I'll see you for them. Have a magical day. Goodbye. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>